so hello everybody, I'm Barry Nadler, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I wasn't sure, I've never spoken at a word camp before, so I didn't know how big the crowd was going to be, so I'm glad to have a full room, that's really nice. So what we're talking about is modern visual design today. Um, that's me. I have a company called eLearning Deconstructed where I teach people how to be eLearning rock stars. I come from the eLearning world, um, so I'm not a WordPress developer. I'm a, I'm a designer. I come from a world where we create training for banking professionals. That's the company I actually work for as a full-time job is FIS. They're up in Maitland. I don't know if anybody knows of them. We train um, bankers how to use core banking systems. So my role with them is actually an instructional designer, a media developer, visual designer. I create tons of PowerPoint slides. We create that get delivered up to the web and delivered via different mediums. We do video and, um, and web-based stuff. So, so that's what I bring to the table. So what we're talking about in this presentation, I, I was kind of trying to figure out what you guys might be interested in, and I thought inspiration is always a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I've got a ton of slides. There's about 100 slides, but they're pictures. So it's a lot of inspiration. I've got a couple of videos, and my goal is to just kind of point out things and say, pay attention to this style and this style and this style, and then show you examples of it. So yeah, there's a lot of slides, but we're going to go pretty quickly, hopefully. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a video. This is a video that I shot. So um, what I want to point out is this is a local McDonald's. Everybody been to McDonald's? Yeah. Seen the menu? Seen the menus that look like this? Okay. When you watch this video, you'll notice they're going to zoom in on the food, and we're eventually going to pan over, and you're going to see the menu, and then there's some other things after it, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now let's see if I go. So you can see it zooms in. Oh, sorry. There you go. It's going to zoom in, and then they're going to show you another piece of food. The thing about the menu is notice there's a lot of white, a lot of white, and then just a small picture of the, the food. That's going to come up again later in other examples that I have. Here's some more videos. Notice they're very close up on the food. I just thought this was interesting. Also, if you go to Wendy's, you'll see the same thing. And Burger King does the same thing as well. So it's very common. So I was in Best Buy. And I'm fi filming a TV screen. This is one of those 4K TVs. Take a look at these images and understand what you're seeing here. They're all wide expanses of um, nature. And again, this is all going to come back in the examples. You'll see it again. I, just, I was totally caught by it because it was everything that I had been trying to put together in one example in Best Buy. And th this video is about two minutes long or so. And I shot it with my phone, so therefore it's kind of shaky. But there's a pattern here. They're all these vast expanses. Now these are close-ups, very, very close-ups of plates and extreme close-ups of food. And I guess that's like a fungus of some sort. Oh. And honeycomb. Yeah, it's really cool pictures. <laughs> and some mushrooms. Yeah, there's the sticker up in the corner so you can see it was on TV. Carrots. And then these are now top-down shots of food and close-ups of the bottles and the flowers and such. And I think that might be the end. So let's talk about visual design here. So the first one is a letterbox design. This is a very common thing. So this is a photo of fruit. No big deal. It's just a close-up of fruit. As we've seen letterbox on our TVs from the DVD days, this is kind of what they look like. Well, because everybody has wide screens now, actually, this would have come from like when everybody had the 3 by 4 TV screens. So they letterboxed them to make them wider. Well, now we all have the widescreen TVs. So letterbox has actually changed to this. You're seeing more of this. And you'll see this, I think, you'll see a lot of it on like websites at the top, across the top bar. And they'll have like a big ad or something. And there might be the three dots in the middle where, they, where you can swipe the pictures. So here's just some more examples. Here's a medical example. Are you able to see? OK. Here's some coffee. 
I've thought this was interesting as I was doing research. Coffee is a repeating pattern. There's a lot of images of coffee that I found. Here's an industrial one. The letterbox seems to be much more intimate because you're, you're close in on people. So then there's the monochromatic style, which is stuff like this, where there's a lot of whites. And they're usually a black and white image, but they're usually very striking. Here's another one that's a close-up of a puppy. You've got to have the puppy. Everybody loves Aww. puppies. Exactly. There you go. Aw. So just because it's monochromatic doesn't mean it has to be black and white. This is a monochromatic image. It's all fairly similar in color. So you can still have a color image. This is another example. Now what I do with stuff like this is I'll do something like this with it, where I'll put a box on top of it that's like a semi-transparent white, and I'll put some words in the middle. You'll see this a lot with the box of text. And that actually comes up later in another example. This is another version of it. I actually like this one better, where I used a green box rather than a white box. And I used white text on it. But it's still a pretty cool image. And you could use that. And you could actually probably even letterbox this if you wanted to and take the praying mantis word and put it over here. So this one is called point of view. Point of view comes from the, the wearable cameras and the, the selfie sticks and all that kind of stuff. So it's this whole new style of photos that we're finding. And these, a lot of these came off of um, iStock. I don't know if you're familiar with, with that website. It's stock photos, so you'll see an iStock logo on many of them. But it's stuff like this. You've probably seen this. And here's one where it, it's like you're holding the person's hand. Or these shots where you're looking down on things. This was, remember the food from the video? Where, you, where they had the plates of food, that's this style. And here's another one where you're in a canoe, or you're holding a phone. So this one is sensory immersion. This, is, this was also in the video. This is the close-up style, where everything is really, really macro. And these were images that I took on my website, because I talk about creating e-learning rock stars. I was looking for some images like this, and I found these that were related to, to rock and roll. And then there's your coffee. The coffee came back. And again, you have the flowers, close-ups of flowers. You'll see a lot of that stuff. And here's your food, your close-up of the McDonald's hamburger. And then a puppy again. But this is kind of interesting. I mean, you can almost see how wet the nose is. It's, it's, I mean, it just it totally sucks you into the picture, rather than a wider shot of the dog. OK, so this next one is called Busy with Boxes. And this is those text boxes on the screen. One of the things that I found was very interesting is because of the amount of media that people have to consume, we've gotten used to being able to read text on top of images. That's a whole new thing now. I mean, in the past, this text box would have been a solid white, or it would have been off to the side. Now you're starting to see it in ads and such all over right in the middle of the pictures. And you're still able to comprehend it. You're even able, I've seen ones that have multiple boxes of text. And the, whoops. So these came out of another presentation, which is why they say text goes here. And actually, you can see what they did was they blurred inside the box so that you could see the text a little better. And again, here's your wide expanse of, of nature. So then there's flat design. And this is a style that's been around for a couple of years now. Um, it's becoming very popular in my industry. And I know it's popular in the mobile industry because it's a lower load on what, goes, what comes onto your phone. But it's images like the, the logo here, not the coffee beans. Again, the repeating coffee image. Um, but you have images that are very flat. They're, they're almost illustrated and um, with no real drop shadow or anything. And, and I know from my perspective in an e-learning world, I like this because I can create that very easily. Um, I use PowerPoint as a design tool, and I can create that with shapes. And it doesn't take a whole lot of graphic skills. Here's another one. Again, you can see it's just boxes with icons and things. You'll see this a lot in infographics. And if you don't know what an infographic is, that's in this later. Here's another example of a website that has um, flat images, flat design. 
and you'll see there's there's no drop shadows. It's all like just basic shapes. I mean, any anybody could create most of that with a basic shape tools. This is um I'm a fan of McDonald's by the way. <laughs> In case anybody didn't know, these are signs. And I guess it's a either an outside mall, a train station, or something. But you can see McDonald's has picked up on the flat design as well. And um, I happened to notice I couldn't find a picture of it, and I was driving at the time, so I didn't stop to take a picture. But they have another big set of signs that's on the turnpike going south, I believe, that are flat design images that are not those, but they're a different set. Does anybody know that restaurant? Bingo. Steak and Shake. That's inside the, right by where the bar is in Steak and Shake. So they're using a, a, rare, a variation of it as well. And then there's a piece up there in the corner. You'll see that in a minute. That's a different style. But it's becoming very popular. So this is um, this sketchbook style. This is coming about more and more. And from everything I was able to see and research, it looks like it's people rebelling, artists rebelling against the digital design, the, the clean lines. So this is things like this, where, where everything looks like it's hand drawn or it's drawn with a marker or, or what have you. And the next image I'm going to show you has just become popular in the last day. Whoops, went too fast. That one. Yeah. I actually just added that in the speaker ready room. I was going through Facebook and I saw that and I said, you know, that is exactly what we're talking about. And this thing has caught on like crazy. I mean, it's all over Facebook. But it's just a hand drawn picture that looks like a peace sign and the Eiffel Tower. Oops, wrong way. There we go. This was a movie that was out. I didn't see the movie, but I saw the picture. My daughter saw it. She loved it, cried all the way through it. Um, but it's the concept of the handwritten, the handwritten logo. Again, McDonald's. I'm going to go back to McDonald's. These are big signs, billboards. So they're using the hand drawn as well all over the place. So they're using it all, I mean, they're using all kinds of variations of, of styles just to see, either to see what works or because they know it all works. So here's some logos. I don't know if any of you are into logo design or in need of a logo, but these are logos that are of that hand drawn style. And you'll see this stuff, I mean, it's all over the place. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Here's another example. This is very much like that Fault in the Stars logo where you have text that's a, and you'll see it's actually, it's two different font styles. And then you've got some hand drawn elements up at the top. So we talked, I mentioned infographics. Infographics are a visual way to show data, lots of data in one picture. A lot of times they're really long. Um, they started out in USA Today on the front page. They had that little picture in the corner that just showed some kind of a chart of data. And it has become this type of stuff. Where this one is, um, if you follow it along, it's the history of cars. And, and all the way up till 1984. I keep going the wrong way. Here's another one. Again, this is the interesting thing about infographics is a lot of them are flat design. So if you can understand flat design and you can create flat design artwork, you can make infographics very easily. Do you guys do stuff like this on your websites? Is, is this? No, but I'm going to now. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking that infographic situation. So, the, so you present a lot of data on your website? No. No? <laughs> but you will now. No. <laughs> so how, will you, how would you use this? Well, I'm going to use it for presenting something. I actually haven't figured out what yet. But I thought that, I thought that it was so eye-catching that it's going to make me stop and read whatever's on it. OK. That was my take. Any, anybody else have thoughts on, on this style? Yeah. Mm -hmm. are really good for Pinterest. And if you have a website where you think you could find a good audience on Pinterest, they're really like highly repeatable. If there's a lot of good information, people put it on their Pinterest board like that. So. Yeah, I would imagine for a political campaign, this would be a really good thing to do. Because you could summarize a political view. Eye yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is another thing. I thought this was kind of interesting as I was going through and doing research. This is a resume. I thought, and here's like technical skills, Photoshop, um, it looks like Illust um, Illustrator, WordPress, I, I don't know what those two are, 
um, in, involvement in different organizations, how to contact them, um, different job experiences and things. I just thought that was kind of neat. I'll probably end up actually using that myself. That's kind of neat. As a side note, my resume looks a little similar to that. Not as colorful. I just did like grayscale and like a, like dark pink color. And then I also have a Yeah. Well, this is completely different. I mean, if this came across your desk as a hiring manager yeah. and you were looking for somebody that had some design skills, I think you would probably pick this person up. Oh, yeah, in a hot minute. Yeah. As a matter of fact, what you could do with this, you, I mean, if just this is a little off topic, but you could turn this into an inter interactive, um, like a PDF type of thing where you have multiple pages and by clicking on various things on here, it takes you to other pages. Yeah, it's it's a portfolio. Yeah, it's, called a <laughs> it's called a website, yeah. But you can't email, well, you could email a link, but I mean, it, it, you just... If I were sending in a resume, the PDF you're talking about would be freaking amazing. Yeah. As long as it's not going into the applicant tracking systems, because applicant tracking systems are not going to recognize your images. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So you're yeah. going to be immediately booted out. So true. Good call. So here's another one. This is uh, people washing hands. <laughs> Types of activities by locations. Again, I mean, it's it's all it's I mean, you, it's all very simple to make. So busy with words. This is something that I've noticed is showing up a lot of places. Here's that picture back from Steak and Shake. This wall down here is where that graphic was. That was the flat design of the hamburgers and stuff. But people are starting to do stuff like this, where they're just putting gobs of words together that give you a visual picture of what we're talking about. Anybody been to Chipotle? Seen their cups? That's what their cups are. It's just all words and pictures and things. So this one showed up the other day. I was um, going up to, oh, this is probably where I saw the sign from McDonald's. We were going up to Chattanooga for an event for my daughter. And the, oh, the closest Fazoli's, if anybody doesn't know what Fazoli's is, it's a fast food. Virginia. Uh, no, Georgia. Valdosta. Valdosta. Oh, you do? OK. Well, we used to have this in Florida. <laughs> like right up the road from where I live, and they closed them all. So we made a pit stop in Valdosta to go to Fazoli's, and when we got the cups, I was like, oh, this is exactly the style of busy with words. So I took a picture of it and threw it in the presentation. So this is now showing up all over the place. So this is the white backgrounds, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A's menus, and they have these gift cards. Remember the McDonald's menu that I showed at the beginning? It was all the white backgrounds with the pictures of the food. It's the exact same thing. I think, I think Wendy's is doing it. I'm not sure. I think Burger King is also doing it. Yeah. So this is this is again at McDonald's. Again, it's it's a it's a gray background, but it's very similar style. So now we're going to move into logos. So if you're doing logo design or anything like that, here's some styles that are coming out that I've seen a lot of these pom poms. And this is really easy to create. I, was, I didn't know how time was going to go, but I had an example. I was going to show you how to build one, but I mean, it's pretty easy to see it. It's just a bunch of boxes. And you just rotate them around and color them. So then this is a similar type of thing, but this is called facets. And they're like geometric shapes. You see this in clothing, and you see it in logos, obviously. Um, letter stacks. This is another one that's kind of interesting that makes for a kind of an eye-catching visual style. Orlando Museum of Art. Sorry? Orlando Museum of Art. That's oh, are they doing that? Yeah, that's like that. Cool. All right, so crests, kind of logo crests that you can like put on the middle of a t-shirt or something. You could use this up in the, right in the middle of your website at the top. So photography, I'm a photographer on the side. So I figured I needed to throw in some actual photo styles as opposed to just design ideas. So these came from Getty Images. Every year, Getty Images and um, iStock both do two different <coughs> trends. And that's where a lot of these ideas came from. But these photo styles came directly from this. So if you wanted to look that up online, you could. So the first one is called gender blending. This is, this is interesting because what it is is it's it's taking the, the roles that people normally think of somebody in and putting them in a different role. So guys looking like girls, girls looking like men, kids at girls doing 
boy things and boys doing traditionally girl things and that whole crossing of, of what's happening. So here's a little girl that's doing karate. You know, normally you would think of that as a little boy. Here's a um, image that looks like, um, what's that guy's name? That James there you go, James Dean. But this is a female. Here's a guy who looks like he's in a traditional mother role. And notice he's all tatted up and everything. I mean, it's totally opposite what you would expect. Here's a mother teaching her child how to do bow and arrow. Normally, this would be something that you would see like at a Boy Scout camp. And then this is what's called wanderlust. This is the big, vast expanses of images. You'll see a lot of this, and that's a definition of what wanderlust is. And I think for the longest time I was thinking it was wanderlust, and I really looked at it and went, oh, it's wanderlust. A strong desire for or impulse to wander, travel around, and explore the world. It's shots like this. You just go, I want to be out in that hut or on that trail. Remember these from the video at the beginning? Here's somebody doing yoga. Now, would you really do that? Probably not. But it makes you want to do it, exactly. So then there's this style of merging mediums where you're seeing a photo, but you're starting to see artistic elements from another medium mixed together. This is kind of similar to that sketch that was the sketchbook that was earlier. Here's like the, the lungs and the x-ray and stuff. This is kind of cute, the kid holding the balloons, but they're grapes. The sardine can with a city. I'm not sure what that represents, but it, yeah. how, like, how, how well stuff in apartment, apartments in urban areas? Oh, there you go. OK. So then we're mixing of fonts. So we saw this in one of the other images where we had multiple fonts on the screen. This is similar, but I mean here they're vastly different. So I didn't know if this would be valuable or not, so I decided to throw it in, but it's some inter interface design trends that have been around for a couple of years. So the first one is Metro. I don't know if you guys have seen that. There you go. Yeah, it doesn't even have a logo on it, and you know exactly what it is. <laughs> But it's boxes, and you put different things in the boxes, and the, this is the interface. So people would click on the things, and they'd get different pieces of information. This is the newest version of Windows. I took that right off my computer. It's still got the, still keeping the boxes, but there's less of the boxes on the interface. And the Windows Phone. I mean, if you go back to inspiration, that would be your yet more dream one, right? Yep, yep. You'll also find this in the Xbox. The Xbox looks like that. I, th I think for a while, I mean, Netflix kind of looks like that because it's just got boxes all over the screen that you're clicking to launch stuff. <coughs> then there's this minimalist style, which is kind of exactly the opposite. There's like nothing on the screen. You have just a couple of pieces of information that you would click and then some kind of a graphic and a lot of white space. So here's your menu across the middle. There's a menu up there. So here's your Apple website. I thought this was interesting. If you look at the Apple website and the Microsoft website side by side, they're like basically the same website. I mean, even if you look at Google, like a lot of development tools and all that, they all have that same. It's the same thing? Design. I mean, look at the main Google interface that you go to when you go to search. If you're not on, on the actual Google website, it just says Google with a search bar. Well, I mean, if you look at Google Analytics, Google Developer, they're all, they all have a same problem. Yes, they do. So this is kind of a minimalist website. There's not a whole lot going on, just the menu at the top. But then you have this big picture here. And you can see it's kind of letterboxed. And it's a close-up of somebody's hand. And it's got text on top of it. So it's kind of a merging of several of the things that we've seen. So these are some real sites that I captured. It's wanderlust, but it's also that perspective, because she's kind of dragging you along into the water. POV. Yep, POV. Here's Disney. I thought this one was interesting because you have several different ethnic types going on in here. This is mint. Again, it's your perspective. It's also the flat design down here. Their app is actually flat designed. You have text on the middle of the screen. You have the letterbox going on. 
So I'm going to close what I'm sharing with you with what is my favorite commercial. This commercial came out of um, the Super Bowl. There was a lot of talk about the Budweiser commercial that had the pony, the, the Clydesdale and the dog. This commercial came up about three quarters of the way through. And I saw this commercial. And one, it captured many, many, many things that are in this presentation. And two, it, I thought it was interesting because it's a beer commercial about beer, rather than trying to get you an emotion. And when I talked to people about it at work, and I was sharing this commercial with everybody, it seemed that there was a divide. The women seemed to like the one with the Clydesdale and the puppy. The guys remembered this one. So I don't know why. I just thought it was interesting. So they need both. Exactly. They needed both. And the, the Clydesdale puppy one got a lot of play early on, ahead of, ahead of the Super Bowl. And I think it was played at the very beginning of the Super Bowl. So I, I don't, I'm not a marketing guy, so I don't know what the reasoning behind all that was. But I thought it was just kind of interesting. Let's see if I can make this thing play. There we go. Notice the big words in the middle, the close-ups. A lot of point of view stuff, yep. And actually, the words are telling the story. There's no dialogue at all in this commercial. <laughs> I think it's interesting at the end, they actually go through the process of serving you a beer. Cool. You know, they have the, way, the server coming out with the beer, and then they hand it to you, and then they do the close-up of the shot of the beer. So that is really all I have in the way of inspiration. Yes? All right, thanks, everybody. This was good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad this was good, and everybody got something out of it. Excellent. Yeah.